Hey, it's Jeff, and welcome to day four on the Viking expedition ship Octantis on the Antarctic Explorer Cruise. So we woke up on day four, finally approaching the Antarctic Peninsula. We were at sea in the morning, and then about 10 a.m., we started to see the land ahead of us as we came into the Antarctic Peninsula. It was kind of neat because the land just kind of appeared out of the clouds. At first, we weren't exactly sure what we were seeing, and then as we got closer, it became obvious. So we went out on the bow of the ship and they had some scientists out there who were available to talk about what we were seeing. We talked with a geologist and a glaciologist from the University of Cambridge who was pointing out some things to us. Uh, one of them was a neat rock structure called the Astrolabe Needle that's 160 feet high. It's pretty far away here, you can't tell, but it's very tall, and it was uh, named after an earlier French expedition ship. And uh, so we hung out there and did that for a while. We went to the uh, aft and did some bird watching for a little bit. We uh, also saw quite a few whales from the bow of the ship. The captain comes on the PA and announces when there's uh, a group of whales ahead of us, the ship as we're approaching it, which was really neat. Gives you time to get out there and check them out. My favorite clip was this three whale tail flip that we caught. So a little bit later on, we arrived at Fournier Bay and we went ahead and got suited up for a special ops boat ride that we had scheduled. So when you go on the special operations boats, you meet up in, a ga in the gathering area that's just outside the front of the Aula Theater. And I'll give you a tip, which is when you're suited up to go on the special ops boats rides, I would you get dressed in your cabin before you come down, but I would not put on your hat or your neck gaiter or your gloves before you go down. Just kind of stick them in your jacket pocket because you can end up waiting around a while for everybody to show up before they take you down and put you on the boat and it can get a little bit warm waiting around. We had that problem a couple times. So we went ahead and they took us down th through the uh, staircase down into the hangar area of the ship which is really neat to see for the first time and you kind of wind your way through there and end up getting on board the special operations boat that is sitting in, in the hangar area on kind of a rig that that backs it out of the back of the boat like it's a garage and deposits it into the water. So that whole process was really kind of neat. We enjoyed going through that the first time. There's a guy there with a remote control box that operates the entire rig that that backs the special operations boat out of the ship. And when we went out that that afternoon it was pretty foggy and snowing this was one of the few times it snowed on us the whole time we were there but it was snowing pretty heavy big big chunks of snow and it was really peaceful really quiet the water was super calm you can see and we spent a while just kind of riding around the bay there was a guide on board the boat pointing things out to us and it was neat because at the end of it as we were kind of headed back towards the boat there was a couple of special ops boats out there as we were headed back towards the ship, we saw a group of humpback whales who was surface feeding. And so that was really neat. When they're surface feeding like that, they turn on their side so you can sometimes get a neat view of their side fins and even their belly sometimes. After returning to the ship, we... Uh, we, back in our cabin, we saw them testing out the two submarines that are on board the, the ship. And they were just kind of keeping them on the surface out right next to the ship. And they, uh, you can see the safety boat that they used along with the submarines. And they went, went around for probably a half an hour or so and just kind of rode, rode the submarines around on the surface. There was people out on the top of them. Um, unfortunately, we found out that the, the next day that there was a technical issue discovered with the subs and that they weren't going to be available for the entire duration of our cruise. So that was a kind of a bummer because I was really looking forward to going out on a sub ride. Hopefully future, future cruises get to do that. 
later that evening we went and enjoyed some dinner in the World Cafe. There is a wide variety of options from salmon wellington to tomahawk steaks to this. And my all-time favorite is gelato for dessert. Sometime around this time, we sailed out of Fournier Bay towards our next destination. And we'll cover that on the next video. To get notified when the Day 5 video is released, just click on the subscribe button below. And if this video has been helpful, you can like it to let me know that. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.